Whenever we see top 10 videos related to Fire Emblem, they are usually about either the best or the worst units. We like to talk about the ones that are at the top of the lists, but also the ones that are comically bad. But what about the forgettable units? The units that nobody is talking about. The most unpopular, bland, boring playable units in the entire franchise. These 10 units are so mediocre and or forgettable that literally nobody voted for them in the recent Choose Your Legends popularity poll. Now, I know Choose Your Legends isn't always a great way to measure a character's popularity because it has a huge rampant botting problem. Greetings, Professor! Nintendo has even admitted as much. But here's the thing, you cannot bot away votes from a character. So the bottom of this list is a far more accurate representation of a unit's actual popularity than the top of it could ever be. So what I've basically done today is to go all the way back to this list, take the 10 playable characters who got the least amount of votes, and then compile them in order. We're going to take a look at these characters and try to figure out why everyone seemingly forgot about them. So let's begin. Number 10, Garrett. 16 votes. I swear to god guys, when I decided to do this video, I had no idea this guy would show up here. I recently made a video about underrated Binding Blade units, and I spent a lot of time talking about this guy. Garrett is a pre-promoted berserker who joins pretty late into Fire Emblem 6, and he usually goes straight to the bench. I'm the bench bench! Both in terms of design and utility, being just another generic bandit with an even more generic looking portrait. By the time he joins, most players have already either trained a berserker of their own, or have a full team of units, and there's little room for another generic bland pre-promote, and especially one that struggles to stand out as much as Garrett does. And that's probably why he's on this list, sad as I am to admit it. I've already talked about why I think this guy is actually a pretty underrated combat unit in a previous video, so I'm not going to just repeat my points today. But if you're interested in checking that video out, I'll throw a link to it in the video description below. Number 9. Dalvin. 14 votes. Also known as Rotoban in the fan translation, Dalvin is the substitute of the sword fighter Ulster from the second generation of Genealogy of the Holy War. The substitutes are the replacement characters you get instead of the actual children if you fail to pair up their mother in the first generation, or if the mother died before you finished it. Just being a substitute in and of itself is reason enough for why he's on this list. It goes without saying that a substitute character will never be as popular as the one they replace. And Dalvin himself is generic even compared to the other substitutes, at least in terms of his design. He's a sword fighter that lacks any redeeming qualities whatsoever, though his combat isn't actually bad. Doing a substitute run where you don't pair up any characters on purpose in the first generation is actually a pretty fun way to play the second generation of genealogy, and way harder harder to boot. I highly recommend it. You should try it out one time. Number 8. Dimna. 13 votes. And right after Dalvin, we come to Dimna, another substitute character from Genealogy. Dimna's lack of popularity is probably rooted in the same issues that Dalvin had, but I'd say that Dimna's design is actually even more bland and forgettable. He literally looks like a generic NPC. However, Dimna as a unit is actually not bad, at least not by substitute standards. He is a bow knight with a pursuit skill, which already sets him apart from many other substitutes. And he also has a really cool secret event in the first chapter he joins that gives him a whopping 5 bonus to his strength, which actually turns him into a pretty lethal horse archer. Once he obtains the mighty Brave Bow, he becomes a killing machine with damage output comparable to Lester, the character he replaces. Number 7. Luke. 12 votes. It actually blows my mind that a character who has literally been in Heroes since the beginning even made it onto this list, though looking at his stats and skills, it's not exactly hard to understand why most people forget about this guy. In Fire Emblem, he is exclusive to the 3rd as well as the 12th game, where he was a generic cavalier joining early on as part of the new recruit Smart took with him at the start of the game. Not much to say about this guy, he was just a cab that didn't cab things. New Mystery gave this dude a few supports, but they sadly opted to give him the wonderful personality trait of guy who trains a lot, which is probably my least favorite archetype in Fire Emblem. Number 6. Connemore. 11 votes. And up next, we have this guy from Tracia776, a pre-promoted paladin joining very late into the game. Connemore actually has a pretty cool design, and he's also quite solid as far as a unit goes. His stats are good, he has respectable growth rates, and even a leadership star, which is quite a rarity in Tracia. But the catch? You need to play the dreadful B route to obtain him, and anyone who has played Tracia knows how tedious that route is, and I think that's a big reason why he's on this list. Tracia is already a game that's not very popular among the fanbase, and a character that 
rather requires you to play the most tedious route in one of the most tedious Fire Emblem games to even recruit quickly becomes very forgettable. Number 5. Dice, with 11 votes. Up next we have Dice, one of those weird Arcanea Saga characters that decided to put into new mystery for some reason, so that's pretty much your reason right there. However, I will say I am actually kinda mad about this. I mean, just look at this guy. He's a Viking who likes to gamble. He comes equipped with a Devil Axe, and his name is Dice. I mean, this guy is basically me if I had a beard. So, this is a travesty, you guys. This guy should not be on this list. Shame on you all. In Choose Your Legend Season 6, we have to campaign for Dice. This guy needs more love. Number 4. Macallan. Also with 11 votes. Yeah, I got... I got nothing. I, I can't even defend my fellow Baldi here in this situation. Macallan is just incredibly forgettable. He joins late into the Arcanea games as an armor knight with awful bases and growth rates. The only redeeming quality this guy has is his hilarious Fire Emblem 1 portrait. But then I realized that it's just a mirrored version of Dolph's portrait. So he doesn't even have that as a unique trait. <laughs> yeah, this, this, guy's, this guy's just really bland. Number 3, Hayden, with 10 votes. Now, I debated whether or not I should put this guy on this list, as I wanted there to only be playable characters on here. And while Hayden is technically playable in Sacred Stones, he is only available as a bonus unit in the Creature Campaign. Still, I figured I'd put him on here anyway. He's the father of Innes and Tana, by the way, two characters you've definitely heard about. He's that dude that shows up at the very start of Sacred Stones and gives you some gold, and then he basically kind of goes away and is never brought up ever again. As a unit, he is rather mediocre at best. His stats are not great for a level 10 ranger, but he has some decent growth rates. Fun fact, in the Japanese version his skill growth was only 40%, but in the localized American version of Sacred Stones they upped his skill growth to 45%. You know, I'm more interested in why they decided to make this change to Hayden than I am in Hayden himself. Who on earth among the localization team sat there and thought to themselves, hey you know what this super forgettable bonus unlockable character needs? A 5% higher skill growth. Yeah, perfect. Now everything is as it should be. Seriously, I, I want to know who did this and why they did this. W was it a joke? W was it someone being drunk? Were they bored? Like, why? Why would you go and give Hayden a 5% higher skill growth? Someone please explain this. Number 2. Raiden. With 9 votes. Raiden is another Arcanaya character exclusive. He's one of those cavaliers serving under Camus. Then he shows up as a playable unit in New Mystery and is all like, Hey, did anyone order a super forgettable cavalier? No? No one? Alright, I'll just go put myself on the bench, I guess. Here's a steel sword and a steel lance, bye! Yeah, that's, that's pretty much what Raiden does. I, I got nothing. And clocking in at number one on this list, this is the most forgettable playable character in Fire Emblem with only a measly six votes in the entire Choose Your Legends popularity poll. It is none other than Bishop Yoder. And this one actually really surprises me. I mean, there are a lot of forgettable playable characters in Fire Emblem, and I certainly understand why Yoder isn't really up there with the most exciting, hip and cool young characters, but for him to be number one on this list is something I did not see coming. Yoder is a pre-promoted bishop that joins extremely late into Binding Blade, and he's actually kind of crucial to the plot as he helps Roy a lot during his war politically by using the Elamine's Church's influence to make things very rough for Burn. When he shows up as a playable character, he does so with a bunch of legendaries in his inventory, and Yoder himself is no joke, coming as a level 20 pre-promoted bishop with respectable stats and good weapon ranks. However, I do understand that an already capped character is not a great look for most people, as it makes him completely unable to gain any experience. And this is probably the reason why most people don't like this guy. When a character caps out in Fire Emblem and that experience bar stops going up, it actually makes it a lot less fun to use the unit. Even if Yoder wouldn't get that much out of his level ups, I dare say he would see a lot more use if he just came at level 18 or 16 or something, as that would still allow the player to earn some experience with him, and such it wouldn't feel like a waste every time he did something on the battlefield. Still, I really don't think Yoder deserves the number one spot on this list, because the dude actually got some pretty kick-ass supports. When he was young, he actually had a romance with none other than Nime, which is pretty kick-ass. I seriously recommend you go check out some of his supports one time if you haven't, because some of them are really good. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was it. These were the 10 Fire Emblem characters everybody forgot about. And you know what I'm seeing right here? You see a trend? You see something that all of these guys have in common? They're all dudes. There's not a single girl on here. Hmm. Tell me in the comment section why you think this is the case. I think we already know the answer, but I'd like to hear your responses anyway. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, did you enjoy this list? Did you actually use any of these characters in a recent Fire Emblem playthrough? And do you think they deserve a lot more love than they're currently getting? Maybe we can actually get these guys some more votes in the sixth round of Choose Your Legends. That would be pretty kick-ass, because I definitely feel like some of these guys don't deserve to be on here. Anyway guys, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and a comment, it really helps out the channel a lot, and let me know what kind of videos you would like to see moving forward. My name's Min Mengs, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys very soon. Bye-bye.